Thanks a lot, Weather. We are here on Thursday, back at it, with Torrance Training Labs, Jamie Hagia, Apex CrossFit's Tanya Wagner, Gold Coast CrossFit's Jeremy Austin. From CrossFit Firewall, my name is Joel Godet. Glad to have you along with us here on the second day of competition. Split the teams up into two heats here. We're gonna test some strength. It's time to go heavy. We're gonna test max loads of one female athlete getting their best jerk, one female athlete getting their best front squat. One of the athletes is gonna get, one, a male athlete get their best jerk, and one, the other male athlete getting their front squat. They'll have two attempts within 30 second windows, and they'll have two minutes between their lifts after a rest time, and the score will be the total of each athlete's best successful lift. Absolutely, and plenty of recipes. I don't think you could get anything better for team competition. Lift some heavy barbells. They've got to be very strategic though, and you must get one in the bank straight away. You don't want to be waiting for that second lift in order to get that successful lift. Just, I think, just ease the nerves a little bit as well. Probably a lot of pressure on these teams as well, and making sure they don't want to let your teammates down. There's the guys from Milford Conquer team to keep an eye on because Christine Middleton is one of their women. Holds the clean and jerk record at CrossFit competition from last year's semifinals, a 265 clean and jerk down to Jamie Hagia. Thanks, guys. This is the first time we're seeing jerk blocks at the CrossFit Games. And with multiple lifts these athletes will have to do, that'll allow them to lift their maximum load with the lowest risk of injury, not having to lower to their shoulders and their collarbones, but being able to drop, drop them on the blocks. Jamie, thank you. It's always interesting when you get those new implements One in competition minute. settings for the very first time. Let's take a look at the start list here for the teams in heat number one. Greater Heights Ascend. They're going to be a team that will throw up some strong weights. So will OBA in lane eight. Mayhem Justice, all eyes on them being the third team from Cookville here. And then we mentioned in lane 11, CrossFit Milford out of Milford, Connecticut. And so far in this 2022 season, we've seen the semifinal and at the quarterfinal level, we've seen some lifts. We saw a snatch ladder, we've seen the clean and jerk ladder, and coming out of those two, Milford was second in that, the semifinal uh, event, the snatch ladder, and they were seventh over all these uh, teams out for the clean and jerk in the quarterfinal, so I really do expect them to put up some big numbers. That's Emma Ferreira in front. Middleton was in the back there. She was the one with the 265 pound clean and jerk. Look as well at Greater Heights and Emily Tanner, whose daughter Delilah, by the way, first birthday yesterday. And similarly, they both had two top 10 finishes in those snatch and clean and jerk events as well. Now these teams are going to lift in 30 second windows here. so West Chase with a 215 jerk. 10 seconds. Ten seconds. Athletes do have to load Three, and unload their own two, bars two, appropriately here. Jollers, Jamie said those jerk blocks, they are sitting very low. Athletes having to get right underneath the position. And Emma there, that barbell sitting just above her waistline, so that is a long way to go down. It's almost a third, almost a half squat to pick that bar up to then get it overhead. So some possibly a little bit of leg fatigue coming in early, even though you're doing a barbell from shoulder to overhead. Push press, push jerk, split jerk, or a strict press if you want to. Now here's Ashley Wozni from OBA. The women from Philadelphia are gonna lift big weight, Wozni and Kelsey Q. Big numbers, that's her first lift at 245. 10 seconds. And I really like this style of event for a lift. Three, Having 30 three, seconds, two, but you only two, get one attempt. A lot of times we see if there's a missed lift, you get a second attempt. I love the pressure factor that it really allows you to see what these athletes can do. Semi-cold. 
lot of pressure as well. You mentioned getting that lift completed before the 30 second window. So you've got to make sure your timing's spot on. I'd be thinking they'd be using that 20 second time window at the start and giving themselves 10 seconds for the jerk, which should be plenty of time to get it from shoulder to overhead. Three, three, two, two, one, one into our next 30 second window. Now you have teams with rest periods to reset their barbell, obviously. As the windows roll, we roll down the lanes as different teams have the opportunity to lift. And you only have one attempt, and I think we just saw our first failure there from Toluca and Gina Ramazzotti on the right. So she cannot use the remaining time to go back and try again. She just has to wait for the second window and hit something she knows she can get. Not a guarantee we didn't see that full Lift, so whether she was bringing it back down or not, but that's where that's where having two lifts I think is a really important and really skillful uh, element to this lift. You don't have the luxury of time or multiple reps to get to make up any errors. She was just really unsure whether or not to go push jerk or split jerk. The feet were just too narrow, and she just couldn't get that bar up overhead to that point of stability enough just to get that successful lift. 265 here for Emily Tanner again. A year and a day from giving birth, a one-year-old daughter cleared the snatch ladder, hit the 11th platform at semifinals, a 265 jerk. That equals what she put up at semifinals last year. That was strong. That was that was beautiful. And she's definitely within her limits. 255 was what she had before that. That was Middleton, excuse me, on the clean and jerk. I'm sorry. But but that's the number. Three, three, now it's not a two, one, clean and jerk, it's just the jerk, but that's the number you're looking at overhead. Beautiful. Loading barbells, a little bit of an issue as well. It's a little bit lower than you used to. <laughs> Ashley Wozni, how about what she just did and the hug from Kelsey Keel? That's going to put them in second place. They call themselves the meat squad. It's all about three, confidence. Three, you go two, out there, three, you hang four. meat, you have confidence. You walk around with your chest proud. Yeah, yeah, Ashley Wozni just did that. Good at 261. This is all jerks across the board. The next lifting window will be front squats. Once we complete the jerk portion of things, and there you go. This is where the strategy comes into the picture, right? Who is going to jerk? Who is going to squat? Who's going to shoulder overhead? Who's going to squat? Been pretty easy there. We, they know their numbers. You know where you're at to say which one should just execute. Really comes down to the execution of it. If it was me out there, I'd be definitely doing the jerk. I wouldn't be going anywhere near a squat. Sanya, what's your favorite one in relation to jerk or squat? I would jerk myself. Yeah. <laughs> but that's where you know but that these athletes know what they uh, know their areas. And you can have an opportunity there where they don't all have to do the same lift, which is kind of nice. You can utilize your strengths if you are stronger in one of those areas. Ingrid Twandle there for CrossFit Twa uh, Trondheim. One of the four teams from Norway here competing. Front squat, one of those great nine elements that we do start out with our foundations of CrossFit. Starting off with the air squat. Front squat is our second progression from that. Getting that weight in position on your frontal plane. Enabling to hold the same points of performance that we like to see in just a basic air squat when we are loading up. A heavy barbell and try and maintain a really good strong position with those elbows always pointing down the lens of the camera. Here's Kelsey Keel now. It's going to be those bobsledding legs going for a 300 pound front squat. And that's a hang me kind of lift for the team from Open Box Athletics. So cool, we're going to keep her chest up. That was a great squat. And only her first lift. It was Kelsey Keel that facilitated OBA having a team this year. Joey Tortora, their captain, was thinking about the season. Kelsey Keel moved back from bobsledding back to her hometown in Philadelphia, and he said, hey, Let's get a team together. What are your plans? Here they are at the games. 
this left platform is 245. 245 on the front squat. That's good for Deirdre Franzen out of Kibo, too. All of our ladies. Still one more attempt to go. Excuse me, I stand corrected. That's Christian Mathis from CrossFit Rhapsody. Three, three, two, two, one, one. Two events back to back here, and probably not enough fatigue in the jerk or the squat to cause any dramas for the third event coming up in just a little bit. Sixty for this event. Probably something just to spark that nervous system. Oh, good fight, but it's a great fight. Just not there, Florencia Grosso. Seconds. The strength of the Toluca team from Copacur in Latin America. The great thing was that she kept her elbow, elbow position up really high and held that uh, high body torso position even though she was failing and ended up just having to drop those elbows and let that barbell progress as it does very fast to the floor. I honestly thought she was going to get back up. Yeah, she and did. usually when you start coming down, it's over. Yeah, but she kept it in her leg, like Jeremy said, kept the, the, her chest nice and tall. Looked like a good lift from West Chase. It did, maybe even a frustrating that she could have gone heavier, and that's the risk you have with only two lifts. You know, it, are you going to go for it? Three, two, two, one, one. Now here is Christine Middleton from CrossFit Milford. It's almost interesting she goes with the front squat, not with the jerk. We talked about holding the CrossFit record for in-competition clean and jerk. But when you can front squat 315 with room for more, yeah, sure. And 275. Rotate through here. Ten seconds. Solid lift in lane 12 for Oslo. Ten minutes for the women to lift, and then we'll switch to the guys. Kelsey Keel's going to up it 20 pounds on her second effort. Hit 300 the first time. And she'll drop out of 320. She got about halfway up. But she still had a great first lift. It was a risk. She went for it. And they're still in the lead now. Out of the women, so. I don't believe anyone here. Last lifting group. Christian Mathis with some good fight for Rhapsody. And a yell. Team from South Carolina back for their second consecutive trip to the games. But it looks like those will be the top three there with OBA, Greater Heights, and Milford. No surprises. So the ladies did what we expected them to do. We'll see if their men can match and uh, what they can do here as well. They'll quickly swap in. Now the good news is the weights are going to continue to go up. So they're already loaded, and these are 45-pound men's bars, the Ohio bars from Rogue. So they were already loaded and ready to go. They were not using the Bella bars, even though typically we see that with the ladies. Here for the gentlemen. Those rogue Ohio bars, commonly referred to as the men's bar in your affiliate. Bella bar would be the one, the 35 pounder. And just to note in the far right of your screen, there were platforms. The men did have a chance to be there on those platforms, so they aren't as cold. Uh, they, they haven't been standing here the entire time without being able to touch weight. How many attempts do you take just to get yourself loose in that 10 minutes? It's really the biggest thing is just keeping your body moving so you're not just standing and then going into this jerk or, the, or your squat. So keeping yourself moving with its lighter weight. They don't have the blocks or a rack to be able to get, the, get too high, but just there if they need it. Well, temperature's pretty high as well today. They're not going to be standing around getting cold, but you want to keep moving. Right back doing the jerk, having to do some overhead work while you have a male partner doing some squatting work. Five minutes of everyone hitting their jerks here will then rotate through to the front squats. Twenty-one fifty left of screen. Now you've got a full 30 second window and you've only got one shot, so take your time. And we're good on the left. Joey Tortora from Open Box Athletics was on the right. That was Victor Munter who hit for 21.50. Two 
Good at 295. Michael McKayday, one of the Oceana representatives from New Zealand, now over in Abu Dhabi. And he was a big favourite down at the regional slash sanctional competition, but gets his first opportunity now as part of CrossFit Yas at the Games. It's a Yaz team that is multinational, coaching at Vogue Fitness and CrossFit Yaz over there. That's a good lift for Toluco. Juan Martin Grosso and Federico Guggenheim. Three hundred and forty pounds on the jerk. Three sixty-five. Back right. And that was a strong, <laughs> real that strong. Solid. I believe that's CrossFit Trondheim. <laughs> And yes, good up front. And 350 in the back as well. So a really nice rotation. And 385 in the back asking for noise. This is Milford Conquer. Oh, yeah! <laughs> Devin O'Neill and Tony Facchini cleaning up and putting Milford in first place. He could have gone, like, I don't want to stretch it, but, like, you go for four if you get the juices pumping. Man, that first lift, well, here's the other thing. When you only get two lifts, you're not fatigued. Right. You're, not, you're not using up so much energy there. Whew. There's Joey solid. Tortora now. Just don't catch your beard in there. He does balm it three times a week, true story. Hang it in there! He just can't finish. That right arm just not locking out enough. He got his head through really well to position the bar, but that right arm just buckled underneath. His left was good, but just couldn't stabilize overhead. Uh-oh, here we go. 390 pounds. This is still Milford. On to the front squads here for Milford Conquer. This will be Tony Facchini, who just followed Devin O'Neill. I, I got excited for a second, but still. A lot of ladies in the background are getting their bodies moving. They're, they're standing around and probably feeling some of that build up in their heavy lifts. Well, keep in mind, as soon as this five-minute stretch is over, there'll be a brief respite and then a reset immediately into event three, which is going to involve, in some form or fashion, everyone running two miles. And you couldn't get probably a polar opposite to this event compared to that one. This one called Strong, the next one called Fast. And it's got to have a good balance of both if you are going to succeed here at the CrossFit Games. CrossFit Trondheim. Nice, smooth, easy on that front squad at 345 pounds for Lars Rudy. Again, mobility, another factor we need to come into play. Not just getting a barbell overhead, but getting that front rack position for your front squat. Oh no, I suffer badly from it. But getting those elbows as high as you can and resting that barbell on those front shoulder muscles, the deltoid, that is a beautiful position and that is an easy lift. Strength and flexibility though, Jeremy, that is what we talk about and that's why flexibility is so important so you can work through that full range of motion through all your joints and be able to capitalize on your strength there. Tony Facchini out of Milford Conquer, team that finished second at these games back in 2015. Not the same individuals. First time at the games though as an affiliate since 2017. Nicholas Hecht, 350 on the front squad from Open Box Athletics in Philadelphia. What didn't happen there? He's a strong athlete. He has confidence in his squad. He went a little heavy here. His elbows just fell forward a bit and his hips rose before he was able to stand straight. He seemed to collapse a little bit in his core as well. So breathing an important aspect of this as well. You don't want to be breathing out at the bottom of the squat, especially when you're loaded up as much as you are with this. 
Rhapsody CrossFit, 4.05 for the team from South Carolina. And that stands up supremely easy. Jordan London, maybe one of the biggest beasts we have in this team competition, and he backs it up. I was going to say, with that range of movement as well, he's got a long way to go down to get that hip crease below the level of his knee and then get it all the way back up to full extension for that rep to count. What's he going to go for his second one? Got a 400-pound attempt from training Think Tank. And Chris Kajeski bails it out in front. New addition to the training Think Tank team this year. He took Kyle Roop's place. He's a coach with Triple T, went Masters this season. Milford right now is still in first place overall. Training Think Tank's actually in third. Greater Heights Ascend is the only team in the top three that has maintained that position from after the women's lifts. 420 pounds on the bar from 80-20. Nothing. I gotta clean it back up. <laughs> it is all or nothing with this lift. With two attempts, you've got to go for it if you get that one in the bank. Three, two, two, one, one. I think that's an interesting piece to all this too, right? You have the safe weight. That was your key to success. But then how big a jump do you take? What kind of risk do you take with only two attempts? Well, that's, a, I mean, knowing you have another heat of athletes, you've got to be smart when it comes to these lifts. You get you back every every pound you can. You go 10 pounds up. I mean, you have to gauge it on how you feel with with, with these lifts. But I wouldn't, I, you don't make a big jump in my opinion. Absolutely not. Just little steps as you go along. And the teams that have already finished a little bit more recovery time before they do attack event number three. Twenty-one fifty here. And bailing out. That was Frederick Studa. Thirty seconds remain here onto our last four set of teams. You're looking at the top three right now. None of them are lifting in this final quadrant. One more shot for Rhapsody at 425. Jordan buckling and bails out. CrossFit Milford, they conquer here in event two. 1325 for the total poundage. Big numbers. Man, they are strong. Not, we have no surprise, three, three, not surprise two, there. They put up the big numbers one, one. when it comes to any lifting events. And I tell you what, OBA needed that too. A top three finish. Kelsey Keel was devastated. Said as much on Instagram yesterday after their poor performance in event four. To come back and do this today gets you back in the game. And now they need to switch gears because it's off to that run. That was event two. One scored event. 100 points. It is going to roll right back into, though, event three. Completely different event. And that's one of the tricks and quirks of the CrossFit games, right? You don't get this a ton at the semifinals, certainly not at the quarterfinal level, where you're going to get a back-to-back -back event. How well can you recover from one to the next? Yeah, these athletes are going to go for their one-mile run and then figure it all out who they're going to send for another <laughs> mile run after that. Look at the drop-off. like. Look at the table setting that Milford just did there. 325, I'm bad at math, 75, 70 pounds more than Greater Heights in second place. That's incredible. OBA just off pace. And those will be the top numbers going into the second heat where we have some of the other big dogs that we know are put up numbers similar to that. But the ladies who came out the strongest, the fiercest was OBA, Ashley Wozni, there with her 260 pound jerk. Got things set up. Kelsey Keel backed that up with her 300 pound front squat. They both look like they were having some fun out there. Fantastic form, set their men up well. Milford just doing exceptionally well on their positioning. Head straight through, locked out overhead. There is no way that one was coming down. Good fight from Purple Red there. The second of the two Oslo teams that have made it here to the CrossFit Games. And now on to the run. You'll see the rope. 
everyone tethered together over the course of this run. You have to be staggered at lead on each side of the rope over the course of it. And this is a one mile run, all four. Then you'll drop two athletes, do another mile, then the other two athletes with the third mile. The strategy, Jeremy, correct and being key. Absolutely. Running with a rope, not an easy thing to do. The rope's got a little bit of length on it, but now you've got to work out who you put where. Who's got more gas in the tank? Has the front squat taken it out of you too much? The jerk probably not as much because the arms are down hot bell beside their bodies. But there could be actually a strategy change mid-event. You come back, one person might go, hey, I've got enough in the tank, I'm going to keep going. So they can actually pick their pairs once they do come back after the one-mile run. Important to get out in front as well because you don't want to be caught in the peloton, the backlog that's happening in the middle of the pack right now. OB cr OBA CrossFit is actually making their way, trying to around the back. And then here again is the description. It will be that all four athletes will run with this 10-foot rope. And then when they pick the two athletes that we're gonna, are going to run the next mile, it can be male-male, female-female, male-female pairs. Typically, in any history of the games, when we see a team run event, it's already dictated. A male-female pair, or they run all together. So the fact that they can strategize this in in any capacity, it really together, comes down to each individual athlete's, athlete's abilities and what will make the best sense for the clock. I say it's only a mile run, but it is only a mile run at this point. So how do you push the tempo? How do you push the pace? Certainly these teams have trained by running some longer distances than just this. What does it look like? And certainly in competition, is it maybe a little bit faster than what you're used to? Team captain has got to be out or the fastest run has got to be out in front to drag that team along, but making sure that you do keep a well enough pace that you, other team members can like, stay up in control of what's happening with that four-person team. O2 is the official recovery drink and hydration mix of the Noble CrossFit Games. You can visit drinko2.com slash CrossFit. You'll receive $25 site-wide on O2 recovery drinks and hydration mixes. Athletes knowing exactly where they need to go on this track and big gap starting to appear. But this is the same track they cycled yesterday. What sort of pace is it going to be? We're going to see sort of like a double time on what they did on the cycle leg yesterday for their one mile loop. Look at the gap that's opening up right now for CrossFit West Chase out front. This is West Chase Red. They came into the day in 33rd place overall out of Oldsmar, Florida. They competed at the games last season and actually missed originally out of the semifinals. They were a backfill here at the CrossFit Games and had a pretty good reckoning with themselves. Maybe went into it the semifinal season thinking, not that they were resting on their laurels, but hey, we've been to the games before. We're training, we're training, we know we're gonna get back there. And it was a shock to the system when they didn't initially qualify. They're taking advantage of every opportunity they can get now that they're back here. Opportunity for the team members who are feeling a little bit fatigued from this first run. They push the first one pretty hard. They're going to have the roughly five minute time cap to get back and get enough recovery to go for that last lap. So this is a really good lead they've got at the moment. And if I'm your coach, here's what we're going to do. You, all, Everybody runs. Yes, you're fatiguing, they're slower, you're not as strong athlete, uh, runners here, but then they do get that rest. So while they're recovering, your fastest runner should be able to continue pushing that pace a little bit harder on their second run. And then when you come back, hopefully that there's enough recovery there for your slower or not as proficient runners to get as much out of their run as they can. It's interesting. Aaron Hanna was actually the last runner of the pack there for West Chase. He is the veteran of the team. Kim DeCray, who's running along alongside him in the blacktop said that she looks to him as, as her rich froning. He's been to the games as an individual before, but he is the one, you know, they have those, those memes of wolves have the leader in the back of the pack. He takes up the back of the pack here on the run. The protector, he's standing there waiting and probably a good strategy from them. So he knows he's got more in the tank, but he's just going along with, with the pace that the front runners are setting. Strong leader is really important. And sometimes when you're there behind them, you know, you get that support. It's more of a psychological thing knowing that you have someone right there behind you and you're not holding everybody up it's fine they're kind of also setting that pace crossfit overtake right behind pardon the pun trying to overtake west chase right here one two out on this run the first of three miles the only mile that these teams will run together as a foursome and look at the push right there that's why you necessarily put somebody behind who's your faster runner, not necessarily out front. 
You have that incline there, so a little bit of support you know, from the back. Not an incredible amount of distance, but you also have to keep in mind... Two-person prowler push. One. Just keep shoving along. Let's go. Let's go, team. That was Casey we got stuff to do. <laughs> that was Casey Strong in the back Staggers. trying to just... Hey, no, you're not slowing down. Not here. Not at the games. I did that with my fiancé at the shopping center. Let's go. Time to go. A couple things to note here. The athletes had to pick what footwear they were going to use for both events. So both event two and three, they had to choose what you're going to uh, wear. So lifting shoes or runners, most of them went with the running shoes um, in this event, but that was just something else for them to think through. And the other thing is, I love the style of this event being that we have the strong and the fast, the juxtaposition between the two. Jeremy, you had mentioned it during the strength lift, or during the, during the lifting part, but this is the epitome of CrossFit, and it reminded me as soon as I heard this, this is like what is fitness. If you ever went to your level one, when I went to my first level one, the what is fitness lecture, it's like, what is fitness? Is it just being able to run fast? Is it just being able to have a sexy big lift? And it's like, well, in CrossFit, Greg Glassman defined it as we want all of that. We want the 500-pound deadlift and a sub-five-minute mile. And so getting the teams to test this part and saying, well, who is the best CrossFitter in terms of their strength and speed? We're seeing that. The idea is that the lifter has to be able to outlift the runner and the runner has to be able to outrun the lifter and how those two things mesh well together. Because typically you have one in, in any time you are good in one area, you're usually giving up something in another area, so usually you're not seeing them being able to do all. But in CrossFit, that is what we're looking for. All right. Now we see the strategy with who will drop off. These don't have to be male-female pairs, male-male pairs. It is completely up to the teams. Interesting that West Chase have dropped the two strongest runners off for the last anchor leg to bring it home as strong as they can. That's an interesting strategy. I thought it was going to go the other no, way. but Jeremy, we talked about this before this event, and we said we wonder if there would be teams that would do that, because if those strongest athletes get the little recovery and they can make up that much more ground, then, you know, and, and a lot of times your middle-of-the-road runners, they can handle two miles at a slower pace and keep that pacing. And now we're starting to see some moves. Oslo purple-red just bounced to the outside and is now surged in front. We'll see if the strategy pays off when the West Chase gets their men back out on the course. More rope to work with as well, so they can space themselves out a little bit more. A couple of the teams working side by side, a couple working in Indian file, but the easiest part of the track, the path down in the first leg before they get into the grass and the gravel, and with all that rain that's gone from yesterday, ground probably a little bit dry and probably looser underfoot. Now, no surprise that Oslo Purple Red is able to make a move out front here. Hakon Lechnis is one of their two athletes. He is a triathlete. He is a guy that can go and run for days. You can see him with the tan shirt on, second team there, going with the Jake the Snake Roberts method of putting the rope around his neck. Whatever's going to work best for your arm movement, propelling yourself forward, and running distances of one mile, 1,600 meters, it's a great test of fitness. Michaela Norman starting to set the pace here for Nordic in the gray pants. She is moving. A sub on this team originally took Anna Vigadal's spot after she was ill. If you can go out and get somebody, go find yourself Michaela Norman, multiple-time regional athlete, now on a games team. And really, like we said, like you had said, Jeremy, though, as much as you can maintain your running position and posture and your form and relax shoulders, that's really what you want to do. I look at Norman just pulling her teammate along. And that could be a strategy as well. If you have someone that can just pull another, you're only as fast as your slowest runner. So if you can have someone that can pull them along and help to keep them at a better pace, then that's what you need to do. It's Alexandra Lebro who's right behind her for Nordic. Oslo Purple Red still right behind them. Now you're in the pack. What can you do here? Here was that start of that second mile, and this is where Oslo Blue is passing the ladies of West Chase. So that could be a key moment for Oslo Blue. Oslo in the past, uh, sorry, on your screen it says Oslo Purple Red. It was Oslo Purple Blue. They are, or I'm sorry, it is Oslo Purple Red. Too many colors, really. All the colors. I was trying to figure out what Hakon Lechnis was doing because he put two fingers up. I was like, is he counting laps? Uh, no, we saw the Nordic uh, flag off to the side. I think he was giving a peace sign to the local fans. 
not just this piece, though. We got a whole heap of heavy hitters stacked up, packed up, and ready to take the field for heat number two. So all the teams out here look at We are 10 minutes in here to this three-mile run. Everybody runs two of those miles. You either run them consecutively or you get a break in between. I'm interested to see what the pace difference is between this second and third lap and these athletes that have been waiting for about four to five minutes for their team members to come in. Ten minutes gone, so roughly a little bit slower than five-minute pace. You'd be, expect that with athletes running with an implement and having to pace off each other. And athletes probably haven't had a chance to test this distance either with their pairs. It's a, one of those uncomfortable distances, one mile. I mean, it's way different than if you have this long, more of a, a longer run that you can kind of settle in and feel that. We see a lot of sprints on the field, but this middle of the pack kind of distance run, this is a really uncomfortable uh, distance to do. Well, to do. The 400 meters is an uncomfortable sprint, and this yes. is probably a very uncomfortable middle distance run. Shout out to the women out there, though, because this is a pack of five guys, and Michaela Norman is just smoking them for the vast majority of this run. She has been the pace setter of this lead pack. Although Nordic has fallen off a little bit here as Oslo Purple Red has jumped out a little bit in front of them. Hako Leknes literally pushing Henrik Negard a couple of times here. I think he does have his hand out. Yeah, he's got his hand out on Negard's waistband again. Maybe just a little bit of a guiding hand just to let him know, hey, we just got to pick up the pace a bit without actually saying anything, even though talking through an event like this, making sure you're breathing the right pace and trying to relax, as you mentioned, Tanya, those shoulders really important. The tighter you are, the harder it is, but your body just wants to tense up at every opportunity. And the push goes again. Right, we've got to pick this up. We've got to put more space in between us to give our last pair every opportunity. Now listen, you got to know thyself. This is a lightweight team. They know they're not going to win a ton of lifting events. They have to come win the conditioning events, the gymnastics events. They have to hit this one hard, and they are. These are incredible pacings. Teams coming back into North Park here just over 12 minutes. And we're now on to mile number three. About a 6.15 mile for these lead packs right now. If you split the difference between the first two rounds and the ladies will take off now for Purple Red, Ragnold, Sam, and Marion Johnson. Looking fresh too, as you would after six minutes. That's a, pretty much a full recovery. So time to stretch, time to get some fluids in as well, and time to just yeah, relax the body and then get out there and keep that lead. Relax the body, yes, but Tanya, the nerves have to be crazy, although they are showing the broadcast in North Park so you can watch, but if you're not the lead of the pack, you have no idea where your teammates are. No, and that's just it. You're just waiting there. You're standing there. It feels like forever when, <laughs> waiting for your turn or your time to get back out there. But for these ladies and any of the Oslo teams, they are fantastic runners, conditioning. They, they, uh, they just have a tremendous capacity. And last year, we know Oslo Blue did a really great job with all of their running events. So when you train together with the best, it's going to help to push you along. And these ladies look nice and confident. They look super relaxed right now, really composed. Marion Johnson's on the right. Ragnald same is on the left. Has trained and competed previously with the Oslo Navy Blue team, their quote unquote top team here in podium contention after day one. We did see in the bicycle leg yesterday with the teams and the individuals as well, the last leg, once they hit the top of the hill, even though not really a hill, but the incline up, once they hit the descent, they really hammered down. Ricky Garrard did a great job yesterday to catch Janikowski on that last lap of the bike and made up a lot of time. And I think this is where teams are going to really make their move. Time's important here, but also the following heat coming up. Well, the other thing that's hard is when you're leading the pack, you don't you don't know who's behind you, and you don't know if the stronger athletes that or the stronger runners are going to start picking people off. Like I believe we're starting to see here with some of these other men making their way through the pack. 
That was West Chase, actually, that was navigating. So remember, West Chase was the lead after the first round, fell off a little bit in mile two, now hit the gas right now. You've got Aaron Hanna back out there, doing work with Dylan Bailey. Oslo Purple Red still setting the tempo here. This could be their best finish so far today. They were 14th in event number two. That was the lift just inside the North Park. That is their best finish so far. Yesterday they had a 20th and a 35th. Keeping in mind, we still do have another heat to go after this. You did mention it is hard to gauge where you are if you are out in front. When you're in that second position, it's almost easy to pace off any athlete in front of you. Just so you know how much distance you've got to cover and how fast and how hard you need to push yourself. But this lead, I don't think they're going to be able to catch them. Yeah, that's a massive lead. What are we eyeballing here? 300 meters? Maybe 200 meters? Maybe 200 at this stage. But that second pack is really closing, so I think we're going to see a very tight finish for second, third place. Or maybe even not, maybe even maybe 100. It's definitely not three. A bit off more than I can chew on that one. <laughs> Again, 14th in the lift. West Chase is trying to make a move, and here they come. Look at Hannah and Bailey. They are going to have a phenomenal day, too. Fourth place in the heat for event number two just now. Now they're in event number three and making a move trying to pick up a heat win. The scent starts right now, and the boys, the top of the hill, can they close that gap? This is going to be, I think, a very good race towards the end. I don't think the girls from Purple Red have any idea how close they are because normally you get that feeling of the sound of the feet on the gravel or the breathing or some sort of indication that someone's closing in on you. But it's probably too much of a gap at this stage. Yeah, that is a massive gap. You're going to need a Super Mario speed booster at some point. Not to say it's not in there. But Oslo Purple Red, Sam and Johnson have just taken a lead and opened it more here in mile three. But I tell you what, every time we look, West Chase just keeps getting closer and closer. The question is, are they going to run out of time? Heat two coming up in probably about 40 minutes from now. These guys have to set the pace and set it for a top three position. We've got about a minute of running left. Remember, each team was running about a 6.15 mile through the first two laps. And I tell you what, that gap is getting much closer. And if you say that, sort of that 18 minute, 30 second time frame we're looking at for them to finish, that's coming up in 30 seconds time, so there's not much time for these guys so maybe has a look back. She just, just started. I just heard them look at Marion Johnson yes. take off. And running on the gravel, you can certainly hear the footsteps coming up behind you. Aaron Hanna is pulling Bailey behind him. You just want to use that hill. Just take that hill. It's Oslo Purple Red trying to back up a 14th place finish in Heat 1 of Event 2 with a first place finish here in Heat 1 of Event 3. These ladies, their composure in that run, just look at them. They, I mean, they're, ooh, the men are fighting with everything they have. They don't look the most great and not using the same running technique these ladies are. But they are pushing. Got to be close here. Gap keeps closing here into North Park. West Chase coming up from behind. Does Purple Red have enough? All four athletes have to cross that line. That red line and then sprint downfield. We thought the line was that red line at the start, but they might have to finish. Well, it, the red line is the finish, is. but Oslo They're Purple Red it, just making sure. They're just making sure. West Chase got across the red line and stopped, but Purple Red said, no, 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 all the way through. And honestly, I give them credit. Yes, Leave yes, no come, doubt. Come, come on back. You're already done. You're
31. It's a 1650 meter run. It's all good. Hope nobody pulled a hammy on that one. No, that was, and you know what? And that's where running into this, we saw this yesterday with the individual event. When you come into the stadium, you have lanes, and so it's not over. They are costly, precious seconds, depending what lane you're in. A bunch of teams here finishing. Milford. And this is where you sit there and go, maybe I could have run a little bit harder. Put a little bit more effort in. Oh, there we go. Giving the girls a little bit of respite on the way back. They've worked hard in that back leg. So Purple Red unofficially is in first in 1904. West Chase three seconds behind. And then Trondheim in third. Nordic fell off pace of that early pack in fourth. 1855 fifth. Milford, who was phenomenal in the lift, sixth. Kilo two seventh, training Think Tank eighth, Greater Heights Ascend ninth. And we're still waiting for a tenth team to come across the finish line. OBA, Sarpsburg, Zarutz, Rhapsody, Yaz, Mayhem Justice, 8020 still out there. It's now OBA, Mayhem Justice in 10th and 11th in 2041 and 42. Milford had great balance across both strength and the sprint, if you can call a 1600 metre a sprint, but great balance across their entire team to make sure they're going to progress up that leaderboard. Now we're going to see them in a high heat over the next three days. <laughs> you bring your own bodywork specialists. Good work for Oslo Purple Red. Maybe they'll let Marion Johnson pick the team name next time. Hey, you dragged us across the finish in the run. CrossFit Oslo, one of the biggest CrossFit affiliates in the world. And true affiliate teams, which I think is really cool as well. In this day and age of super teams, these are just athletes. And even the Navy Blue Squad, who was in podium contention podium last year, they're just people that work out at CrossFit Oslo. They work out at Oslo, and they have a great, they have a deep squad there that are so talented. And um, Kristen Holta trains out of there as well, and it gives them a lot of um, support and has been someone that they've all looked up to. So having someone like her to look up to and to work and train with definitely helps you. You've got to keep in mind, though, the athletes were supposed to do this yesterday. Yeah. They were have, supposed to have four events yesterday. It got broken up. It's normally a rest day for individuals and teams on the Thursday. So they've had a little bit of time to recover. So probably a good thing for some of these teams to have that extra recovery added into their schedule. But do results change if they do bash the four events out in one day? Well, you take that for a first day one for the teams when you look at that with biking event. You have bike, run, and you have um, lift and you're lifting heavy, and then gymnastics at the end. That, there, it doesn't get more CrossFit than that. No, it doesn't. That is literally uh, what we do, and all in day one. That would have been a really happy day one. Uh, a great programming, great test for the first day. It's like a good, well-rounded, instead of one day, we've gone out to two days, but it's absolutely ideal. And it's just ahead of the time cap. Toluca comes in 15th. Every one of them getting across that finish line. Underneath the map, and that is something to celebrate with you. 23 on the nose as we run it back. Now West Chase, where the, is anyone else gonna get out in front of the pack? West Chase doing well, purple, red, making a move. And once the girls got out in front, it got tight a little bit later on, but that lead was plenty enough. And they ran a little bit further than they needed to, but I think their strategy Absolutely, but it's still the judges' <laughs> utter confusion is the best part. <laughs> you can stop. <laughs> Down to Jamie. With three miles of running, and you guys did extra credit running past the finish line, what was your strategy in picking your pairing for this event? Um, the guys are the best at running, so we decided that we go uh, the double round. And uh, yeah, we knew the girls are very. Uh, good mentally, so the last round for them was perfect. 
The women finished this event strong with a coach like Kristen Holta. I'm sure you guys do a lot of running. How did you feel in that final stretch? Uh, it was hard, but it was nice to push with uh, Ragnil, and uh, we managed to just uh, keep our pace up and then uh, speed up in the end. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Coming right back, it is Heat 2. Go back to the lift next in Madison. Twenty twenty two Noble CrossFit Games, the Alliant Energy Center in Madison, Wisconsin, is the host site. Day two of competition for the teams. Events two and three, fast and strong. Alongside Jeremy Austin, the 2009 CrossFit Games champion, Tanya Wagner, Jamie Hagia is our reporter down on the floor. My name's Joel Godet. Gonna start by lifting some heavy weight, then we're gonna run some middle distances. Strong and fast. First, we're going to lift. The ladies are going to go. One of your ladies is going to jerk. The other is going to front squat. Then the men will have a turn at the exact same thing. They're going to lift within 30 second windows and then have a, a two minute recovery where they can add the weight, make some changes, go through that. And then event three will be all about the running. We'll have a one mile run with the full team and then another mile run with any two athletes. And then the remaining two will do the final third mile. Backing a weight. Always important an event like this where you've only got two lifts and you're under a very tight time constraint, making sure you get one in for your team. You want to, don't want to come up with donuts. It gets very frowned upon. But making sure you get one in the bank and then push the boundaries. Where are you going to go with it? Are you going to go safe and just add a few more pounds? Or are you going to test it and try and progress your team up that competition ladder? These are the top teams coming in to the day after yesterday's first two events. CrossFit Mayhem Freedom is your overall leader in lane one here lifting. Oslo Navy Blue won the first event and snapped Mayhem Freedom's 1,800-day leader streak. Down to Jamie Hagia. This is the first time jerk blocks are being used at the CrossFit Games. And as you'll see, it is a fixed height for the teams at 34 inches. For, for someone like me that's 5'3", this is perfect. But for some of the taller athletes, you're going to have to see them squat underneath, almost a quarter squat before they do their jerk and their front squat. Jamie, thank you. How does that change things, guys? Well, it's going to have to go nice and deep to pick up that jerk to start with. Maybe the front squat not so bad because you've got to get down under that weight anyway. And all eyes on CrossFit Reykjavik here, needing to do a lot of movement because of where they struggled yesterday on the gymnastics event four. They took a 30th place in last night's event, so really looking for a redemption today, and there's no reason they can't do it with these two events. 30, 30 Lauren seconds. Fisher's shoulder has been the talk of the team, and in this event, I expect to see her do her squat. She's lined up second, so she will. Should have no problems then. The shoulder shouldn't be a factor for any of the running either. They put up big numbers whenever we see them lift, so um, they, I do expect them to be among the top, if not at the top, with Ten seconds. Ten seconds. some of the others, CrossFit Freedom, Mayhem Freedom, Mayhem Independence. Stand by. Stand by. Number to beat, 1,325 total pounds, combining the four lifts. Best lift for each of your athletes. 245, nice and easy in the air for any Thor's daughter in the back row. Added to their total, 245 for 10 seconds. We're going to lift in quads of athletes here, four teams at a time, three, everyone three, jerking. Two, two, a, B, CrossFit one. in the foreground here, going for 225 pounds. And that's nice and easy for A, B's Laura Sanchez. That is good. 10 seconds. These are 30 second lifting windows that rotate and roll through. What it amounts to is that you get two minutes of rest after you lift. 
It's really important that they make this first lift, like Jeremy said. They cannot reattempt another lift within the window. So they have to know their lifts, what they can come out under nerves, the pressure. 235 there for Winter Rodriguez. Good for move fast, lift heavy. That immediately puts her into second place. Annie Thor's daughter still has Reykjavik in first at 245. All but three teams have eclipsed three, 200 pounds two, thus far. Two, one, one. Maybe that hit of adrenaline as well is going to help. Knowing you've only got two lifts to get. A great position overhead, nice and strong. Maybe a little light for the first attempt. As I mentioned earlier, you've got to nail something first to get three digits added to your team score. Let me steal something from Mads Jacobson back in the semifinals. You have to hit a weight you know you can hit, you think you can hit, and you hope you can hit. Obviously, you only have two rounds here, not three. The interesting thing the second time through, do you go with something you think you can hit or you hope you can hit? And does it all depend on how good the weight you know you can hit was? Good question. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, somewhere in the middle. It really does. Because if you go off that lift that you know and you're like, shoot, that was actually way easier than I thought, then you go for it, you push a little farther. But that comes down to experience and knowing yourself and what your body is capable of doing under pressure. And what kind of jumps do you make in that? 15 pounds. See where that lands things for any Thor's daughter. 260 for a jerk. Ooh, good day. That was nice. And a no wrap to the right. KT CrossFit. It's the Russian team. This is Lara Sanchez at 245 from AB CrossFit. Fittest in Venezuela just two years ago. It's really important to keep that barbell close to your face, and not get too far in front. And that back leg just buckled. Urban as well to the far left. Caitlin Van Zyl failing hers at 250. They did come in as the number one qualified team out of the Oceanic region after the complex. So 250, that's crucial for them. Now move fast, lift Tezzy here, 250 for Winter Rodriguez. And that is good. Volts are in front of Mayhem Independence, back into second place, 10 pounds off of Annie Thoris daughter's lead for Reykjavik. 10 seconds. See what kind of shots we get taken here from Mayhem Independence. Three, three, two, two, I didn't see who one, lifted. If it was Sasha or Alexis, I would venture a guess. Sasha Nieves is taking the jerks for Independence. No, it's Alexis Johnson. It is. 255. And she does hit for Mayhem Independence. Nice. She held on to that, too. That was a fight. Omnia also good, by the way, at 255. Three, three, two, two, one, one. Taylor Williamson in the back corner. Good at 250. And we'll now move on to the front squats here. Three, Five three, minutes two, into this 20-minute rolling event. Here we'll start at 245 pounds here in lane 18 with KT Kolesnikov team. 250 behind for Lauren Fisher. And that comes up easy for Reykjavik. They needed that one. And Lauren needs that too. She needs oh, that, that. Massive yes. confidence hit yes, last night. Absolutely. So much hype with them coming into this competition. Three, three, two, Looking two, to make a run. One, she moved one. to Iceland. Just so much that she's given Eagle to this year that they all have. Pounds on the barbell. 255 for Maria Quintero. That's it. Yes. Elbow position, magnificent. Making sure those elbows are facing forward just to get that barbell high on the rack position and closer to your center of mass to make the squat easier. Tell you what, they've got an underrated female pair, Quintero and Sanchez, national champions three, in Venezuela three, and Colombia, and both incredibly young. 
you moving in this sport. Across the progression of front squat. We start with broomsticks or PVC pipes, and the progression slowly grows until you can start lifting body weight, and then you add some percentages of your body weight. But you never stop wanting the urge to get stronger. The stronger you are, the easier life is. Three, three, two, two, one, one. One of the nine foundational movements of CrossFit. Starting with the S-squat, moving the progression to the front squat. Elbows, great positioning. Good there for CrossFit, poor T. Laura Isaposu. 5'10 right now is still the number to beat for Reykjavik on their combined weight. AB hanging right with them at 480. 3, 3, 2, 2, 1, 1. 275 on the bar for Andrea Nissler in the back. 280 in the foreground. And Nissler drives that up easily. And Freedom now jumps into first place when you combine that with Taylor Williamson from the jerk blocks in 250. See what Fisher does now. 260 pounds. 10 pound jump. She's always been known for her lifting prowess. And that is why Lauren Fisher, CrossFit Reykjavik, we're only halfway through the event, but a massive bounce back for them. Holding on to a top three position. When you talk about quality teams coming in, it's not just for individuals. You've got to be able to gel, and when you do get a knockback like they did last night, this is the best way to boost those spirits and get them back into competition. Now 260 for Quintero. Great fight. Knees out. That second drive. You saw her start to cave a little bit. And the no, push no, no, to finish it off. We're going this way instead. Three, three, Navy three, Blue two, with 520 yeah, thus far. Not only five pounds off pace, 15 last. points out of first place on the overall leaderboard. <laughs> 275 was just good. CrossFit Tyrannis. Three, three, two, two, one. So Navy Blue and Reykjavik are tied at 520. Mayhem Freedom is five pounds in front. 290. This is CrossFit Oslo in front. Three, three, two, so 290 two, for both Nistler and Leona Richter. If they both hit this, it'll still be a five pound mayhem lead. Easy day for Nistler. She's great. Richter a lot of time under tension. Good for and she still drives through it to finish. Not what I expected from Oslo Navy Blue. Worked on their strength. Very, very strong lift. Remember, these women have gone head to head at Wadapalooza with Kristen Holta. They beat Mayhem with Haley Adams. Interesting breathing as well with this front squat. The breath wasn't exhaled until that barbell was on the platform. All right, we're now into the men jerking. Tolo Canyon just did 365 like it was 110. Uh, what do we put on the bar for the second attempt? You've got to strategize that way. I think that was a, like you've got to know that's going to be too light. But the thing in the back of your mind is niggling going, what if you miss this? What is your team well, going to do to you? And the team strategy from here now is what the other teams are doing. They don't know that. They don't know the math, what all the other ladies did that they already made. It's funny, Carl Porter's looking all the way down the field to see what everyone else is looking on his bar. If you can see, if you can see, or if you have somebody in the crowd that can help you with that to kind of give you a little, if your coach can see, and kind of be doing some math. But it's always hard to see from the side. You don't know what's yeah. on there. 
just saw Ivan Verdun in the front for AB CrossFit. It was Urban Energy that I think just had that better than 300 pound lift. Now Christian Harris at 315. Again, the number we're trying to reach is Milford Conquer at 1325. Yeah, that was easy. The standoff, he nearly got it overhead. <laughs> yeah, does he get credit for a front squat as well? <laughs> Three, three, two, one, one. 335 on the bar for Portee. First team in Finland to qualify for the games. 335 is elevated. It was like a half hybrid press jerk. That was a very easy lift. His feet didn't move too much either. The split, full split not required. 3, three two, two, one, one. 350 for Samuel Cornoyer. Mayhem at this juncture, 540 pounds. Put that on that tally. So 890 puts Mayhem Freedom back in the lead. Now, also how do you judge your shots here based on everybody else? We're starting to get to that point where you're running out of rounds and Victus has now come from behind a little bit to announce their presence. Yes, you're taking shots based on what you're able to, but you also have to start treating this like a race because Tolomora Canyo just put 405 pounds in the air. I knew that first one was too light. That's ridiculous. They're going to spring in their step. That's unbelievable. He's peeking. I don't know. Uh, you can't, you, I was going to say you have to, you have to race people, but you can't race that. That was a massive jump. My lord have mercy. Johan Van Ziel. Oh. And he just went stanky low. Now, here's the thing. You have another option to come help. Tad and Nancy coming in to help. I want to go back to Morikenio's lift though real quick. Because for him to make that big a jump, a I understand jump, the first yes. one was light, but the jump in and of itself is a jolt to the system. Super impressive. Good at 345, 370. Ooh. No. What happens when you get that bar overhead, but you can't get yourself underneath it for a Depends where you place the barbell. If it's too far in front, which is normally the case because your elbows are dipping on that dip drive, you're out in front and your body position you cannot get underneath it enough to stabilize. I mentioned before about getting that bar into the center of mass as quickly as you can. And the failed lift there, the head was way head back. Too far back. So you need to make sure that line of mass, you dissect your body from the side and the press half jerk. Yeah, he does a foot step. I know. Good for Escalina. I was going to say, like, he only kicked his leg halfway back and I'm thinking this isn't going to work. And then he just pushed it over head like it was nothing. Three, two, yeah. two, one, one. Chris, uh, Josh Rao Shama. 385 for Invictus, currently in third place. Cornoyer just hit a massive lift back left. Invictus losing their minds though, just putting up some huge weights across the board at the end of the final round on the jerk. And I believe Sam Cornoyer put up 370. Lucas Parker's fired up. Excuse me, Luke Parker, different people, fired up for Mayhem Independence. And we're now onto the front squats, opening up with 425. Yikes. 1215 is now on the board for the Kolesnikov team. 1325, however, is the ultimate number to beat, keeping in mind that second place is 1255. There's a big more jam in between. Three seventy-five, but overtake. Mariano Strong base. Four oh five. Also coming up in the back. Stands it up four hundred and five pounds with one more attempt to go. Ten seconds. Overtake team density. 
three, three, two, two. Now in first one. place after that lift at 405 pounds. KT with the 425. This is 435. Move fast, lift heavy is good. Will Carter. When you put that much weight on the bar for a front squat, you got to put that much chalk on the shoulders to keep that thing in place. Move fast, lift heavy is now in second place behind overtake. Ten pounds the difference. Three, three, two, two, one, one. Now we've got 290 in the back right corner. That's Frederick Dubay. Pro one on the men's side. Strength is not the biggest strength. They're going to try to make up some ground on the run next. 290, excuse me, for Montreal. 365 for CrossFit Omnia. Heard Omnia 365. 340 is also good. That's eighth day. Michael Paz in front. Three, three, two, two, one. Had a strong day yesterday. Had a great day yesterday. Sixth place overall. Working the way up from the final heat. Rich Froning in the back. Going to open up at 370. 370. 365 for Rindahl. Ladies and gentlemen, big round of applause for all of our men on their first attempts as we set it down the way for All right, so Invictus used Jorge Fernandez's lift to jump up by 10 pounds over Mayhem three, Freedom. Three, two, 405 three, on the opening front squat for Jorge Fernandez. It seems as though Reykjavik has missed their first squat with Khan Porter. So this is going to be huge for Khan in the back. One at a 370. Yes. So Reykjavik at least has something on the board there. Kolesnikov team also hits huge. Now in third at 1245. Talk about pressure coming in, especially when you're trying to climb up the leaderboard from 17. And Khan Porter misses three, that first three, front squat, two, and the whole team is breathing one, down your neck. Yeah, good on him. You need to make this. Otherwise, you're sitting there at 890 pounds, and that ain't going to do it. 380 for Urban Energy. Adam Manzi. Adam Manzi stands it up. But did they know rep that? On that? Yes. Oh. 380 pounds, and he stood up too soon. Three, two, two, one, one. That's devastating. Johan missing his jerk and now Adam missing that squat. So Urban Energy stuck at 1140 as their total weight. 455, not going to go up for Carter. I, the, the striking dichotomy of a, a, like a near 100 pound difference on platforms next to one another. An opportunity to use your strength where you've got them. Some of these people are just, <laughs> these athletes just are really strong in their squat. That, that 455 of the journey, that was a, I, I don't unbelievable. That's a good 315 for Dubay in the back. 350 here for Mike Paz. We've got to think with CrossFit, one size fits all. You're going to have strengths, you're going to have weaknesses. You need to attack your, weight, your weaknesses, but also maintain your strength. Just because you're good at squatting doesn't mean you stop squatting. You've got to keep doing that. Right, Jorge Fernandez is off to the right. He hit it 405 to put Invictus in first. You've got 380 up front here for Evan. 390 for Froning, like it's nothing at all. Miss 365 in the back. Fernandez is good for Invictus. Oslo, yes at 380. Invictus is absolutely fired up because that should secure an event win for a team in podium contention on the start of day two. Who huge for Invictus. 440 wow. pounds for Jorge Fernandez. Unbelievable. I mean, he was a baseball pitcher. Drive with your legs, right? But still. <laughs> like they ain't all doing that. Wow. No, that was, that was a great lift. Invictus, one of the teams that we said was a stronger team. Expected to see them up there at the top of the leaderboard when it comes to the strength event, like they always are. But now we need to quickly shift gears. Mayhem, once again, Mayhem Freedom in second place. Solid second place across the board. I would keep an eye on Invictus in this particular run. Just because the Sea of Green was fifth, seventh, and came in fourth at the end of day one. They just picked up an event victory, and they were phenomenal on the running event last year. Invictus could put themselves 
maybe in a spot for a leader's jersey. How do they do it? Well, the recipe for success here is going to be correct run strategy. And while Invictus has many years of co competition experience as a team here at the games, Reykjavik doesn't. So I really hope they do choose the right strategy and use it well. They need to know their running capacity and capability. Well, we saw that in heat number one where they had some teams actually had to change their strategy based upon how they felt on the first lap. Oslo. Can they do what the other team has done? They came in fifth in the lift. But they came in today in second place. They demolished the run event last year with the handstand walks and the mile and a half runs. They, they're they all strong runners, so you know that they're looking at purple red. They're saying, well, we need to beat you guys. Yeah. So they have a time to beat, but everyone else but here in this heat as well. You mentioned that. You've given us the time to beat. Mm -hmm. Now we know what we have to pace off. Yes. So really good having that extra team at your affiliate that you know what numbers you need to hit to make sure you get above that first heat number. 19.04 is the time to beat. 19.07 is currently second place between Oslo Purple Red and West Chase. Now remember, the good news here is you have the entire field, so we just saw Mayhem Freedom finishing up at running out of it, but as long as they pass people, they know they're ahead of them because when they come back into the into the field, then they were, they'll be in the first lane. And we saw that play out in the first heat today, and we saw it play out yesterday. It's exactly how Ricky Garrard beat Yona Koski because Yona got back into North Park, had to run to a further lane than Ricky did, and Garrard passed him. Transition from event number two to number three, 1,600 meters, all four team members joined by a rope, and they've got to get around for that first lap. Once they do get back, any two team members have to carry that rope for the second one mile or 1,600 meter lap, and finally, two team members have probably rested about six, six and a half minutes and they've got to back up. And the anchor leg, probably the most important leg, and bringing the team home. Selwyn now taking the lead. I've got the cycling bloodline, so the cardio in there. The Fowler brothers, whose father was an Olympic cyclist. They didn't get into cycling, but you figure they can go out there and give it a good run. Now here's the thing, anytime that there's mass running in any games or any competition, it's so easy to get caught up in the pace of the event rather than the pace you should be running. All of these athletes have a sweet window that they should be running. They should know their tempos. And when you watch Mayhem Freedom in the back, just kind of staying there, staying composed is really important to watch that and know they're seeing the whole play field of play ahead of them. It's almost scary. O2 is the official recovery drink and hydration mix of the Noble CrossFit Games. Visit drinko2.com slash CrossFit for $25 site-wide on O2 recovery drinks and hydration mixes. Speaking to the Selwyn guys yesterday, they were pretty happy with their first event, even though they did have that delay for three hours. But they said today is the day they are going to make their move because they've really got a lot more in the tank and a lot more to give. They were expected at Torian Pro as they were the first place qualifier coming into the Torian Pro. They got knocked about a little bit and they took it for granted what they did in the quarterfinal stage. Coming into that, they said they're not going to make the same mistakes they made at Torian. And they did gave uh, sorry, they did come in in the second place position into the qualifying for the CrossFit Games, but they just want to make a mark today and propel themselves up. They're in the top 10 spot, so they're looking pretty good. Selwyn with a ninth place finish and a 14th place finish for ninth place overall after day one. The two women on that team did compete at the Games last year, Madeline Schelling and Marty Sykes, and they had a top 10 finish at the Games last year. They've gone to a new gym this year. They've combined with Luke and Ben Fowler. Luke is the smaller, Ben is the taller of the two. And we talked about their father, an Olympic cyclist, their father, Brian, four-time Olympic cyclist. There's some fitness in those bones. Put that team together, they have hopes of a podium. You can see Reykjavik right behind, Invictus right behind them. No surprise in either of those two spots. Any Thor's daughter is gonna be the pace setter, you have to imagine, for Reykjavik. Jorge Fernandez is dragging the rope for Invictus. Same track as they did yesterday on the bike leg, so they'll know exactly where to go. Maybe if there were some spots on the course that they did find 
a little bit of loose gravel or some uneven ground, making sure they keep that track. Victus is coming uncomfortably close to the heels of Rakovic. And Rakovic's going to swing out wide, try to make a pass here. And it's interesting how you make passes early. This is the first of three miles. So how do you jockey? How do you put yourself in position? Trying to trace down CrossFit Selwyn right now out of Hornby in New Zealand, where it is currently winter. Oh, it's freezing down there. Yeah, they said they had to get used to the climate coming up here. Had about a week training camp in the States before coming to Madison. Interesting story, all four qualified as individuals going into the Torian Pro, and it was a last minute decision. They went, you want to go team instead? And they went, yeah, why not? Here they are. That takes some pressure <laughs> off. I mean, it, it's such a different element when you're over on the team because it's such a, you work really hard and you get a little rest usually. There's, it's just a different style of training, but it's fun and it brings the fun back to it. So if they already had the mindset of individual, then just a little bit of pressure probably made that a lot more fun to train. Over the course of this That's why we get into it in the first place, right isn't it? Fun times. That's what they're going for. In the top spot in the standing. Luke Fowler in front, Ben Fowler, his brother behind. Luke setting a really good pace, and you mentioned it in heat number one, Tanya, with the relaxing of the shoulders makes it a lot easier to move that upper torso, and Luke out front is just looks so relaxed. Probably has to get in a few more steps than his taller brother. Why you got to do it, man? I've got to do it. <laughs> How fast can they run? <laughs> they did want to give a shout out, by the way. Their coach has passed. They called him their water boy for the weekend. Bailey Mark, who also competed at the Torian Pro, just missed out on the cut for the CrossFit Games as an individual. Great experience for him to be here as well, this close to the Games. And former CrossFit Games team competitor as well. One of those youngsters excited to see what he can do in the coming years. All right, a six minute opening mile. How's that strike you? That's fast. That's really fast. We're going to see now what do people decide to do? How are they breaking things out? Lauren Fisher, Khan Porter go out from mile two. I really like this. Khan is on an absolute mission this week. So that is a great thing to do. And knowing that Lauren's got to keep up with him because he's going to set a red hot pace. So we're on the second of these three miles. You can pick any of the two athletes to run. That is completely up to you. It is completely about the strategy. Marnie Sykes joining Ben Fowler on the second lap. Con Porter's with Lauren Fisher. Invictus has gone with their two men. So Joshua Alshama, who wears the shades that have the green tint to them with the headband, he runs with Jorge Fernandez. It'll be Devin Kim and Brittany Weiss that will run the anchor leg. Oslo Navy Blue right now, nowhere to be found. Out in the back of the pack, you can see Rich Froning and Mayhem Freedom in the red shorts, middle of screen. They were in the back of the pack to start the run. Part of that is because of where their lane was in North Park, but they have made a move. They've already picked off about five teams. There's Rich. Overall leaders, T and Samuel Cordoyer. It's funny, when Mayhem left the arena, they were in last position because they were in that first lane. It's all relative, right? Relative, yes, but they've got to pick off people all the way through this three-mile run. But they will have a short run when they do get into North Park as opposed to everybody else. Right, it's like you're in last position to the eye, but you're kind of in first position. Like, that's the weird piece to this. Yes, you want to run in the front of the pack, but... It's the hidden leader in all of it. Tristan Leclerc and Frederick Dubay from Pro 1 Montreal in the middle of the pack. They're also trying to make a move. Top five team at the games last season. The team in the lead, Selwyn, at the moment, they're in lane number nine, so they're not too far away from Mayhem. But starting to bunch up a little. And that was a six-minute first mile. That's quick going. 
And that's what we're looking for. Adrian Bavin, programmer of the games, is looking to make the really true test of fitness here, testing their strength and their speed, their endurance. What can they do here? The three mile run combined. Where did Oslo come from? They're now at first. I have great, uh, great pass just on that last corner. We can't put it trying to push Lauren Fisher up the hill. Where did Oslo come from? Oslo Navy Blue sent their two men out there. And I, 15 seconds ago, I said Oslo Navy Blue nowhere to be found. And they're leading the pack. I heard you, Joel. They took that personally. David Dalringard is on the right. Nikolai Biladell on the left. You've got Fisher and Porter from Reykjavik chasing them down behind. Khan probably looking in the best shape. I've seen him for many years. He's dropped a lot of body fat, and training over there is probably the best thing he could have done because it's reignited his love and passion, not just for CrossFit, but competing in CrossFit. And what did he tell us? He said, I'm definitely going back to Reykjavik next year because I love the structure, and I can only imagine what I could do with 12 months in that system. And then you said, team or individual? He was coy. There was crickets. Bit of silence. So, yeah, watch, watch <laughs> this space. But he's absolutely loving the atmosphere over there and the structure with his training. And you can tell... He's bringing his step when we did have a chat to him. Navy Blue looking very comfortable out in front. Shoulders relaxed, having a bit of a chat. Most of other teams looking fairly laboured at this stage. So not easy to get two miles back to back. Oslo needed that too. A first place in event one, an eighth place in the second event yesterday. So they were 15 points out of first. Then they took fifth in the lift, in their heat. We still have to wait for the official results overall. So making a move here, your 0-2 recovery to push out in front. And then Con Porter saying, no, they can't get a big D. <laughs> He's got the hand in Lauren Fisher's back. About 20 meters at the moment is their lead. And extending on the traverse, back down. The slight rise in the track for this one mile run. And they've just hit the peak now. So a little bit easier on the legs as you propel your body. But a great test. And you mentioned that six minute distance for the 1.6 kilometre or one mile run. And what the body is capable of. Go back to the 1954 British Empire Commonwealth Games. Of course. When Roger Bannister and uh, John Landy raced together for the first time and they both broke the four minute mile back then the first time they did it so six minutes for two team members at this level is exceptional well, remember, and, and almost is, doing it again too i was going to say this is two mile run for these athletes got to run the miles back to back here if you're in the second pair obviously you get about that six minute break no surprise that Oslo was able to make this move. Dal Ringard is a soccer player. A guy can run for days. We were told that Billadell is the most athletic man in Norway. So you have that pairing, and they make a move to come into North Park. So Oslo in front, a little bit longer. But look at this. Across the independence, right behind them. Yeah, it's Mayhem who sent both their guys out first. So Sasha Nieves and Alexis Johnson are now out. They're in second place. But Parker and DeChico made a move late. They did. They were not they in the did. lead pack. That back, that last section, the downhill portion. Yep. Whew. How many moves have we yeah, really, seen in I the know, last I couple know. of days on that traverse? And it's not over. How do you like this pairing? Because Tolomora Kenyo, famously, it's the cardio for him to work on. Time to beat 1904. So he runs with Annie Thor's daughter because you know Annie is going to tug that rope and bring Tola along. She just has to turn sideways and look at you, and you just have to keep up. You don't want to disappoint her. <laughs> Brittany Weiss from Invictus running with Devin Kim behind Reykjavik. And we saw Jorge Fernandez run earlier for Invictus, and the thing he told us that he loves about team competition, right? You get to pull one another here. 
last year in the team competition, Brittany Weiss was screaming bloody murder at, Jose, uh, at Jorge Fernandez. Slow down, slow down, I need to stop. Jorge ran faster, and he said, you can let go of the rope and embarrass yourself and have to catch up, or you can run faster. Be a tough love. And she did, and she thanked him for it afterward. You don't get that on the individual side. No, you don't. You motivate each other, or you just scare each other. Whatever works, you have to know You have to know one another what, what works. Here comes Omnia, Mary Kay Dry Silker with the bone on the top of her head, and Mayhem Freedom right behind. Nistler with the hat, Williamson on the left. This is the fun part here, running through the RV park. You think anybody has like beard somebody as they've gone through? Like just toss toss them a cold one as they're running. We'll set up a bench so they can get a drink station. He's <laughs> <laughs> a pain for you. Richter on the left, Hotemir on the right for Oslo. Selwyn making a massive move with Luke Fowler. And Maddie Schelling. Early to push that part, though, in my, I mean, I, I, can they keep that pace? This is, it, it's easy when you're waiting there to sprint your first 400 meters. Well, but that's how well do you know yourself, right? Yeah. But Luke was setting the pace for the team early, so Luke and Maddie are the two best runners in the team. So that wasn't a surprise to see them have a little bit of a rest and really push the pace. They have really closed that gap. And that was the difference that we said, the two different strategies that you go with. You send your stronger runners for the second mile right away or have them rest. But yes, they look super relaxed and they're passing. And how good does Tolomar and Kenyo look on yes, this Tola run? does. Well, talking about relaxed, when he started that run straight out of North Park, I've not seen a more relaxed human in my life. Just his breathing, shoulder position, arm movement, everything, everything looks just really good. And they've kept in touch with Selwyn as well. Selwyn's starting to get a little bit of a lead, but they've pulled that back to about a metre and a half. Well, Selwyn is in second right now. You saw Leona Richter did have a quick peer back. Andy Thorstarter's trying to make a pass, though. The hard part about passing when you have your partner with you is just making sure you're talking and communicating where and when. She's staying right on her heels. You have that thought coming into your first CrossFit Games experience and you're running in front of Annie Thorstotter who's got so much experience. <laughs> Still a high sun with those long shadows here late afternoon in Madison, Wisconsin. This is the second mile for each of these athletes, the third mile for the teams, and the final mile of the event. We've seen many passes coming in the back section of this course. I want to see what happens for the last probably 400 meters. They should have a fairly good gauge from the bike track yesterday exactly when to go, don't leave anything in the tank. Reykjavik picked up fifth place in the first event here, the lift. You can do a pretty good job here. You were 30th in the gymnastics event back at the Coliseum last night. If you pull in a fifth and like a second or a third, you're right back in contention for that podium spot. That's what Annie Thor's daughter said last night. And there's still so much more competition to come. This is only the only after this one will be four events total. Um, we have days of competition ahead of us. Feels like we're well deep into competition. It's only pretty much this is the day one events that we're doing. Rain right does that to you, right? Less than two minutes for that time to beat. Just over 19 minutes. 19.04 is what Oslo Purple Red hit. This is Oslo Navy Blue. Second place at these games last year. We said it yesterday, we will say it again. Last year, second was first for them. This year, first is first. Selwyn hot on their heels. Don't be surprised now to see Selwyn pick up the pace a little bit. They look like they're clawing closer. Record, to Navy Blue and away from the Reykjavik team. This seems, though, about the same distance as West Chase had between themselves and Oslo Purple Red in the first heat, and try they did, they were unable to close it coming back into North Park. It's going to be a quick time. And they're going to smash the time to beat. As you mentioned, it's probably going to be a third place finish for Reykjavik, so that's going to be a great result for them from getting to the fifth spot. 
in event number two with the lift. Now they don't have to run the entire length of the field. They just have to make it back under the Zeus ring and across the red line. 1904 was the time to be. Oh, they smashed it. Oslo, second event win. Here to play. What an event for them in one that we expected them. So right too well that was. But now we have eighth day, eighth day. sixth place after day one. Reykjavik comes in as well. Morakeno just ran the mile of his life. We still haven't hit the time to beat. So these teams are all just passing heat one. And Mayhem Freedom is going to be wounded here. Heading into day three, vulnerable Williamson and Nisler. Racing down that first lane in 1909. Two teams from Heat 1 beat them. Wow. Change up coming. Wow. Oh, the girls, they busted. If we can quote Joe Rogan in the Octagon, they're hurting. <laughs> they're hurt. That speed that this heat went at when well, they started, it was just so fast. I would never doubt Rich Voting and Company, but Oslo Navy Blue has thrown down the gauntlet and has said, let's go. Two days of competition in the books, and we've got a fight. Yeah! Hey, oh yeah! Fantastic of event that we we knew last year first place finish in the run event that this is where they shine. You don't want to give that up, especially on a year that you are coming through. But yes, you're, I, Jeremy, <laughs> your face right now, Reykjavik. I know. I just like I've had it all like last night after seeing Carl Porter's face. He was just so disappointed. But that grin from ear to ear, now they know they're not out. They're going to fight, and they're going to fight all the way. They do, and but this is the thing for them. They know the events that they need to take because they don't know what's ahead of them. They don't know the, the struggles that they will face. So every area that they can excel and capitalize on, they need to, and they will. I'm actually really thankful for the weather yesterday that they've expanded this out to a two-day competition instead of packing all this in to yesterday. We probably see some different results if they did do it all in one day. Mayhem Freedom will wind up in 10th place in the event. Pro 1 in 8th, Tyrannus in 6th, Invictus in 5th, 8th day in 4th. These are all the times from this heat. Third for Reykjavik, second for Selwyn, and the second of four event wins, or second event win in four events for Oslo, Navy Blue. Strong, impressive, confident. Early on, the teams were together, and it was Selwyn, Reykjavik, and Invictus. They were the teams that led this thing off. They were the teams that ended it. Couple jockeying for positions along the way, but when they came back, Oslo Navy Blue just told us this is this is ours for the taking. Purple Red had said that in the first heat. They just smashed that time. Really strong day one slash two, whatever you want to call this day. And this is just gonna take them where they need to go for the rest of the weekend. Let's go to Jamie. With three miles of running, and each pair had a run at two, but in any order and any pairing, how did you guys decide on who was going to run together? Uh, I think we have uh, the female pair is the fastest one on the run, with the most stamina as well. So I think the strategy was just to run fast, the four of us. Then the boys tried to just go all in and try to give the girls a lead. Uh, we sent them out in the lead, and they did a solid finish to finish up with the W. In that second mile, you, the boys, were able to come out, out in front, out of nowhere. What was going through your mind when you guys were in that second mile? It was just to get the fastest time, both of us. And uh, I even got a little bit tired, and I didn't get enough of the bot slip yesterday. So I pushed him up the hill, and then we got a... Uh, Good lead. <laughs> the women, you guys brought this home for the team. He said you guys are the strongest runners. What was going through your guys' mind to bring that home for your team? We were so happy that the boys sent us out in a lead, so we just had to hold on for it. And we just both pushed so hard, and two good people were coming up from behind, and we were just like stressing, but it was perfect planned. Congratulations. Thank you.
They're wearing camouflage today. This is unofficial, but you will not be able to miss them tomorrow. Oslo Navy Blue will be wearing red and white. Your overall leader.